Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fosco here for another edition of the show. We did it. Spurs won five championships, kicks butt. Try not to get the explicit tag on there. Uh, the, the last one or the time before, somehow I got the explicit tag by accident put on there. I didn't curse at all. I only have one episode for sure that was explicit and that was the sexual chocolate one. Ladies and gentlemen, sexual chocolate. Go check that one out. It was really funny. All right, so... Um, Back for another episode. Uh, we got some good stuff going on over here. Um, okay. Anyway, um, let's do some housekeeping real quick. Before we get, hop into these wines, I'm real excited about these wines. Before we hop in, let's do some housekeeping. So this is episode, episode 303, and um, I'm recording this on uh, June 27th. So on, what, five days ago, June 22nd? Is that right? 22nd Monday, whatever that day was, Monday. Um, I get a little email late, late, late in the afternoon, like almost evening, from Apple telling me that uh, my uh, the feed for my podcast is bad. I'm like, okay. Now, over the weekend, I had noticed that on the computer, it seemed like the podcast wasn't quite right. It wasn't updating or it was updating, but... I didn't have like my little, um, you know, meet my picture and all that, but I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I played with it, but you know, I thought sometimes weird stuff happens and I did a whole bunch of things, but you know, I didn't pay any mind to it. And, uh, but then I got the email. I'm like, okay, this makes sense why this is going on. So <clears throat> blip.tv is the host of my videos. So they are where the actual file resides is on their servers. And then iTunes, um, when you subscribe to the when you subscribe subscribe to a podcast, as each episode is released, um, it is downloaded to your computer uh, or your iPhone or whatever device um, as it's released. And usually it depends on how often you ask it to update. So it might be daily, weekly, every few hours, whatever. But it downloads it if you tell it to download it. So um, try not to get this. Try and get that flat bill out. Um, anyway, so. Um, and that's how podcasts work. Now, that's not such a big deal. I don't get a whole lot of podcast views. I mean, I get a few, and I really appreciate everyone that's been subscribing to the podcast. I think it's a great way to, to watch the show, especially if you have like you know a connected device, like an Apple TV or whatever. Um, but um, or you want to you know send it to your television if you have like one of those Google things. You should have like a smartphone. Send it to that and all that stuff. So um, anyway. What's concerning is TiVo also gets a feed from Blip. Now, I have a RSS feed, RSS feed, you know, reader, RSS reader. Um, for some reason, like, the, the um, browsers don't do it anymore. I don't know why. At least Safari doesn't. I can't get Firefox to do it, and I don't care about Chrome anymore. But um, so I have a reader, and so I looked at both feeds, the feed for TiVo and the feed for the podcast, and they're slightly different. Um, and everything comes up, but if you try to click on the file to play it, you get this little window and a little player shows up and then you get this nice little thing that says, you must have a blip.tv player to watch the video. Now, there's also in the reader a video player that pops up and that's the blip player, so you can watch it that way. So TiVo also subscribes to my feed. And I'm not exactly sure if the TiVo boxes do the same thing as your iTunes uh, program, you know, if you have it running, that it just automatically downloads it or downloads it when you ask it to. So we are in a little bit of limbo. This episode is going to be kind of like that, I don't want to say a guinea pig episode, but it's going to be a test to see if this episode shows up on TiVo. Now, another little thing is on the podcast app on the iPhone, all of my podcasts are there. 
I can download them, I can watch them, I can stream them, at least the last 100, because that's the maximum that iTunes does. Weird. Uh, I didn't try it today. Maybe I did. I, no, I didn't try it today, but past few days has worked, and I just pick a random one, so it's not one that's already in the phone. So again, kind of strange. It's working on the phone, but not on the computer. Even though the computer shows that I have, I'm subscribed to the podcast, it doesn't show the feed. It's weird. Um, and you can't find me on iTunes at all. It says it doesn't exist. Or if you try to put, or you try to click the feed um, URL, it says not available in the in the U.S. store. Well, I tried a whole bunch of other countries, and it's not available anywhere else. So um, this episode is going to be that episode to see if everything works. If uh, you're watching this, I hope you watched it on TiVo. Um, but also be aware that if you are watching this on TiVo and any future episodes, that that feed at some point in time might not work anymore. So I am working on trying to figure out a way to serve the videos to TiVo since that is the vast majority of my viewers um, and not have to pay for it or and not have to pay a lot of money. So that's the other thing. Uh, if you don't donate, which actually nobody does except for like two people, one person, uh, there's a donate button over here. I don't harp on it a lot. I don't want to beg for money, but hey man, I mean these are donated to me by, by Kaiken, so that's cool, but the majority of the wine you know, the Tokara was donated to me. That's awesome. Uh, I've got some cider we're going to do soon. That was donated. Um, but after that, all the wines that I'm about to do after those two, after this episode and the next episode, it's all wine I purchased. And it was, you know, a little over $100, almost $200 worth of wine. So hit the donate button, send me some ducats, because this thing might just become a lot more expensive and I'm going to need some help. Um, so people say, well, why don't you use Libsyn and Podbean? That's awesome if it's an audio podcast that only has, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, maybe 100 megabytes in, in size. If you're like a two to three hour podcast for audio, my podcasts or my file sizes are 1.5 gigabytes around that, around that. But they're usually right about 1.5 gigabytes. I have a lot of views on TiVo. These companies, I've contacted them. They've given me the pricing structure. Um, I'm looking at anywhere from lowball, and we're not even talking about the, the initial storage fee that I have to do, um, plus around $100 a month just maintaining storage fee. So I have like a huge money to have to invest just to upload all the videos, which at this point I probably would not do. Or I would have uh, just start, up, start over with this episode or whatever episode I decide to, but still, about hundred dollars a month, maybe a little more in storage fees, plus the bandwidth. That bandwidth can cost anywhere from I'm going to lowball it, two fifty a month. I'm sorry, two fifty an episode, times for a thousand dollars. Upwards of twelve hundred dollars an episode, so four grand. I don't make that much from this thing. Okay, we're talking this. If I did this that way. Um, I would have approximately $50,000 a year operation that I'd have to pay for. Can't do that. So, I'm not saying this is going away at all. You can still find me on YouTube. You can still find me on Blip. You can still find me on the website. You know that little thing that I put down there? 1337wine.com. Um, iFood TV, Roku, their Roku channel, Blip.tv's Roku channel. So it's not like this, pot, this podcast is going away anytime soon if I just do stick with the free stuff. I'm trying to figure out a way to make sure that TiVo's stream doesn't go away. But my, my, uh, my other um, possible issue is if I migrate to somewhere else, even if they give me a really, really good rate, um, that the, all those TiVo people who subscribe, when they get the feed, uh, the updated feed, it downloads everything, and then all of a sudden I'm stuck with you know a $10,000 bandwidth bill. So that's why I probably, if I have a new feed, I'll probably just upload from where, wherever I'm at on podcast uh, on episodes and the old ones are there. So um, that is the, um, the state of the show right there. Um, I'm only three episodes in after 300 and I'm already having feed issues. Again, don't get me wrong. Roku is there with iFood TV on their channel, which I get a lot, a lot of views on that, which I love. Uh, iFood TV has been very supportive of me. I have YouTube. My YouTube views are increasing, so apparently I'm being found a little bit more. I'm also taking YouTube a little more seriously. I used to not take it seriously. I still have a Vimeo channel. I might not keep that going because I really don't get a lot of views, and there's nothing else. It's just Vimeo, and that's it. And it Vimeo's cool and all, but it's 60 bucks a year 
for very minimal views and I can't really do anything else with it. I mean, I could put the player on the website, but if I do that, then I lose any potential ad revenue from Blip or YouTube. So um, I'm probably gonna discontinue the Vimeo when my, when my subscription's up. Um, and you know, if the videos are there or whatever. But uh, Vimeo, Roku, Blip.tv, YouTube, website, it's not like I'm going away. All right, but that was the big, that's the long, what, 10 minute explanations to what happened to the iTunes feed. And if this episode didn't make it to TiVo, what happened to it on TiVo? And uh, we'll figure that out. I'll find that out on Monday for TiVo. All right, so let's get into uh, some lines. I'll just, you know, again, I got to gloat. I don't want to gloat, but just be happy that the Spurs won the fifth championship. We should have freaking won that thing last year, but we didn't. Whatever. I'm over it. We won this year. We dominated. I mean, we had one game we lost, and they beat us by, what, four points in game two? That's only because LeBron was pissed off because, you know, the whole cramping thing, you know, and he's had a history of it. So, you know, whatever. I, you know, I, I, I started initially kind of boohooing him, but then I realized, man, this guy is hurt. I mean, cramps are one thing. I mean, playing with the flu or with a stomach virus, or with a temperature, you know, with a fever, or with a broken finger, with taped up, or a broken nose, and you have a mask. You know, that's, that's, that's different. You physically are able to still do your things. But when your muscles are cramping up in your legs, and jumping is a big part of basketball, and running around, I'm sorry, man. I, I do not fault LeBron. I mean, yeah, maybe it was a little bit dramatic, him having me carried by his teammates, you know, but I'm sorry, I've had cramps in my legs over the years. I mean, I don't have them as much as I used to, but, and I want not a physical person, but they can be debilitating. They can be really debilitating. My calves, I get it, you know, used to get it all the time. I don't get as much anymore. Uh, I try to stay hydrated and all that, but, you know, it's, it hurts. And I'm not an athlete. I can't imagine what these guys go through, you know, having to be dehydrated and all that stuff. So, and if LeBron wants to come to San Antonio, take a pay cut, I don't care. You know, we're not exactly, you know, a big, we're not exactly a flashy market like he likes, but you know, I want some rings. You come here, brother. All right. Um, and I love it that Timmy's coming back next year. I kind of wish he would have opted out and taken less money, but you know what? He's, he's sacrificed enough for this team. You know, in a way, take your 10 million, buddy. Take your 10 million, play another year. And if you want to play another couple years after that, sign another contract. But uh, I don't fault him for opting in either for, for his 10 million. Um, all right, so let's finally get to the wine. So now that we went really, really long. Okay, so Kaiken. Now Kaiken wine, I've had Kaiken, I've had Kaiken wines in the past, uh, not on the show, not that I can remember, but I've had them elsewhere. Uh, one of the one of the places I worked at, we had their not either one of these, but their regular Malbec, and I liked it um, compared to some other Malbecs. I kind of liked it better than other ones. So I've already, I've already been experienced or exposed to the brand. Um, there's a few things though about this brand that we're going to kind of go into real quick before we hit the wine. Uh, first of all, Kaiken is um, the word for the native geese um, in Chile and Argentina. Now, and and on their on their label, they have these, you know, looks like a mountain. That's the Andes. Now, this is I know this from the old material when I, the place I worked at carried this. Nowhere really that I could find on their website and it was kind of, I only found a really small uh, snippet here on winesofargentina.org that mentions this whole thing that that represents, or they don't even talk about the label, but the label represents the wild geese that fly back and forth over the Andes Mountains between Chile and Argentina. Now, so big deal, like this is in Argentina, right? True, but it's owned by the Montes uh, company, which is in Chile, okay? So that's um, um, uh, uh, very significant. So Aurelio Montes, who is this pretty famous winemaker out of Chile, um, he bought the winery in 2007, I believe. And um, so he bought it in 2007 and he um, uh, decided he wanted to make some great wines from Argentina. Uh, Montes uh, makes good wine. We have, you have Montes Alpha, Monte's Purple Angel and all that. Um, he even expanded into Napa for a while. It looks like he don't make he doesn't make it anymore. It looks like the last um, the last vintage of their cab was 2009. Um, so they only made about four vintages worth of wine, 
and uh, but it was called Napa Angel, so that kind of you know get the Montes Angel and all that. So Aurelio is a very very famous winemaker. Uh, he's been Chilean winemaker of the year. He's he's consulted while making wine in Chile. Um, he's been all over the world, uh, either learning how to make wine or just uh, or helping make wine. And uh, so he's he's pretty he's pretty uh, important to Chilean uh, and really Argentinian winemaking. So um, anyway, so the geese, they fly back and forth. And the area is called Patagonia, which I, I kind of heard of Patagonia, never really knew what it was. Patagonia is mostly Argentina, but on the western side of the Andes, for part of it into Chile, it's part of that too. So uh, now I can close some of these windows because they don't matter anymore. I don't need that one. All right, so, um, and pretty much all the windows except for one that I'll get to a little bit later. All right, so, um, so that's a little history of Kaiken. It's been around for a long, the actual winery has been around since the 20s, but it was called something else. I don't remember what it was called. And uh, sorry, Shane, I will talk to you later. Um, so uh, it's been around for a while, but in 2006, I think, is when they bought it. Maybe it was earlier. I already closed all the windows. All right, so let's get into this. This is the Kaiken Terroir Series Corte. 2011 Malbec. All right. Um, you can find this for approximately ten to twelve dollars retail, and um, it's mostly uh, Malbec. Eighty percent Malbec, twelve percent Bonarda. That's why I kept this little thing open. Eight percent Petit Verdot. So what's Bonarda? Let's get to that real quick too. Bonarda is a grape from Italy. Um, actually, there's a lots of Bonarda grapes from Italy, and uh, but the Bonarda grape came to uh, Argentina. And, um, you know, when, when a lot of the Italians came over too. And um, it was, it didn't really know it was Bonarda for a long time. And it was just a grape they grew, made a lot of bulk wine out of it. Nobody cared about it. Okay. And then they figured out what it was. And they're pretty sure it's um, Bonarda Piemontes. Okay. Uh, or Piemontese. Um, or Bonarda Novarese, uh, which is another Piedmont grape known as Uvarara. So again, so if you've heard me talk about or you know anything about Italian grapes, there's like 3,000 grapes and there's really probably like 300 grapes, but there's like 2,700 synonyms, okay? Anyway, there's, it's crazy to learn all the grapes in Italy. Uh, but it's an Italian grape and it was mostly used in Argentina as just bulk wine, just not really good wine. Nobody cared about it. I don't even really cared what, what, what it was called. And now they've been using it and it was the most planted grape up until recently, and that Malbec finally took over. Um, so uh, now it's used in better wines as a blending grape. It's still not really a, a big single varietal wine, but you can find it. Um, so anyway, uh, so this is, um, you know, they gave me some great information here, um, just real quick. So I gave you the, the breakdown. Uh, when they harvest it, they harvest it in 15 kilo cases, 15 kilogram. Uh, cases. I'm assuming that means that you know these, you know the the actual things when they harvest it out out in the in the vineyard, and they don't want too big, so they don't want the grapes to crush too much. Uh, bunches are manually selected before entering the winery. Uh, it has now it has. They're very specific on this. Pre-fermentative maceration for seven days, alcoholic fermentation from tw ten to twelve days, and then post-fermentative fermentative, uh, maceration between seven and fifteen days. So that means we're talking what one, two, three, four, almost almost five weeks worth of skin contact, okay, with uh, you know with the juice between pre you know pre fermentation, while fermentating or while during fermentation and even after fermentation they they keep the uh, skins contacting uh, or in contact with the juice. Uh, maturation is eighty percent of of the blend in previously used French oak, so that means uh, one to three year barrels, as they say, one to three times, they say, for 10 months. And then they clarify it and filter it, and blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's check it out. So just red fruits, you can kind of get a, a little bit of vanilla on it. I get a touch of tobacco, I guess, and, and that's not a word I use a whole, I use a whole lot in my um, descriptions 
of wine because it just don't it doesn't seem to come through to me very often even though tobacco is an extremely common uh, descriptor on aromas I don't always pick it up and sometimes I think it's just because I'm not exposed to actual tobacco that much um, but <laughs> I did smell a Cuban cigar the other day because somebody had one and uh, I was like oh I was like do you have an extra one but not that I smoke but I've had a cigar or two and I wouldn't mind trying one. Don't send them to me because that's illegal. <laughs> Unless I'm in Canada. Then you can give me one. I don't know. There's something. There's a legality part. Like you can't import them, but if you bring it in, it's legal. I don't know. There, there's, there's like a gray area with the legality of Cuban cigars in the United States. Anyway. So, yeah, maybe a, a hint of tobacco. Maybe a hint of cedar, you know, cedar box. That might be where I'm getting that, you know, that association with tobacco, like a cigar box type of thing. But yeah, I mean, really, I mean, I, I guess maybe maybe because I smelled that tobacco recently, I, I really pick it up a lot more. pretty good I mean the fruits there um, it's almost like I, I say it's almost like plum oh you know what the other thing I want to do all right so it's kind of there so one of the one of the markers for Malbec um, when you're doing your deductive tasting is when you look at the rim I even put myself a little note here to look at that again is an electric pink um, uh, meniscus, not meniscus, but you know, the uh, rim edge. And it's kind of there. And it's it's something that just seems to happen with Malbec. Don't know why. It's not, it's not, it's not 100% of the time. And just because you see it doesn't mean it's Malbec. But it, it's an indicator when you first look at the wine that you might be heading down the path of Malbec. And for most, most time, most of the time, you're probably going to be Argentina. You might be drinking a French one because they still make them in France. But yeah, I mean, it was a little bit plummy at first. Now, not so much. Um, it, it's, it's, it's definitely dry. I, I feel like I feel like a little bit. It's a little bit woodsy. Um, I don't know. I know I didn't really need to pour more wine into there, but sometimes a second pour, it opens up a little more. Have you ever opened up a, a, a bottle of wine and get a little bit of a little bit of smoke? That's the sulfur blowing off. Okay, so sometimes it takes a little while to really to, for that wine to really get going. Yeah, I mean, the fruit, you got some red fruit there. It's almost like dark cherry, um, almost a little plummy, um, a little bit of fruit. Um, I'm sorry, a little bit of, of wood. I don't really get the tobacco on, on the palate. There may be a hint now I'm thinking about it. Um, a little woodsy. I don't really get the vanilla. Um, the tannins are a bit, I'd say, medium medium plus probably on the tannins it feels a little juicy too it feels a little fuzzy um like you know like a like peach like the outside of a peach uh texture um alcohol is not high even though it's 14 and a half i don't taste the alcohol i don't feel the alcohol at all so good good balance there um you know i've had 14 and a half alcohol wines and i'm like you can tell there's alcohol in it this one you can't so that's awesome It's just a well-balanced wine. It's not gonna, it's not knocking my socks off, but it's a $10 bottle. Well, 10 to 12. You might even get it for eight. So 
It's an extremely good value. I think it tastes really well. If you told me this is a $15 bottle of wine, I'd still go get it. It's a good bottle. But at 10 to 12 bucks, I think it's an outstanding value. So when I was talking with somebody the other day about, you know, giving points to, to wines, and he likes to use a grading system like, you know, A, A plus, A minus. So, you know, something that makes a little more sense to people instead of like these numbers. Especially if you're trying to go, well, this is 86 and that's 87. Why? Why, why is that one point better and this is one point worse? But also looking at your QPR, so your quality price ratio. So a bottle of wine that might cost $5,000 might get a 95 score, you know, but this bottle is 10 bucks might get a 95 score. That's very confusing, I think, to a lot of, a lot of consumers because they equate the two bottles as the same. So why would I pay $2,000 retail for a 95 point bottle of wine when I can get a bottle of wine for 10 bucks at 95 points? Well. You're really going to have to look at, okay, is it 95 points among its peers or is it just 95 points in wine? Especially even a blind tasting, you know, when you take away, when you take away all, the, all the little other parts that you know about the wine as far as where it's from or who made it and how much money it costs, it's really an evaluation of the wine. Is it a good wine? This is a good wine, all right? This is not a, a, a junk wine. It's not, it's not bulk wine. It's good wine. It's not great wine. It's not, it's not a wine that you're going to be charging $100 a bottle for, uh, and, and people are going to go, I would pay more for it, but I would pay more than $10 to $12 for this. I might go up to about $18, probably not, but it's good. If you find it in the, find it in the store, buy it. If it's, on a, if it's on a wine list, it's probably in that $30 to $45 range. If you can get it for $30, great. If it's in that $40, it's about right on a wine list. It would, it's a good value. I didn't do my water. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. So, uh, also talking with somebody about uh, about my setup. Um, I, I guess they hadn't seen my, or remembered I have a green screen. So behind me, that is not my cellar. That I don't. If you watched a few episodes, this is the exact same table without the green screen that has the Christmas tree back here, or you see like you know the wall with the the uh, Korean chest back there. But I've got my water, so I'm gonna go get it. We're gonna keep recording. I'm gonna, you know, go over here and. Oh, I can't go that far. I'll go around this way. Da, 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 da. So yeah, I'm. Oh, and I'm moving the. I'm moving the. Uh oh. Hope those barrels didn't fall down. <laughs> All right. So, another reason to have the microphone attached to you instead of the camera is that you can walk away and do all this stuff. And now. All right, I have no idea how that's gonna look. It might look really stupid. Um, it might look pretty funny. Who knows? But I'm thirsty and I need some water. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next wine here in just a second. All right, we're back. Don't need the computer anymore. All right, we're back. Let's see if we make this one a little bit shorter. So um, the next wine Oh yeah, move all out here. Hey, um, so the U.S. Okay, again, yeah, I don't have any real. I don't really have like United States soccer team stuff. But while we lost to Germany, we still advanced, right? So I watched the game, and that's not why my voice is like this because that was yesterday. So I don't know, maybe it's allergies. But um, anyway. So um, I was really hoping we would win the group because that would mean we would play whatever team we were going to play next, and then potentially if we beat that team, we would play on the 4th of July. I mean, that would be destiny to press to play on the 4th of July. The only thing better is if England had advanced and we played England the 4th of July and Dodge could replay that commercial. You remember that? If you were there, if you watched the World Cup four years ago and they had that Dodge commercial with the British are coming, classic. If, if I remember... I'll put a link to it below on YouTube because it's still on YouTube. I watched it the other day. Me and my dad watched it well, the other day, about probably like four months ago. Um, but it was cool. Anyway, um, so we play Argentina because we're going to beat Belgium on Tuesday. All right. Even the pundits think we are, except for uh, uh, Alexa, uh, Alex Lalas, whatever. He, he did it on purpose because he didn't want to jinx the American team, so he said that Belgium was going to win. But anyway, um, you know, we're going to beat Belgium. Sorry. 
We make great beer. Um, but July 5th, we're going to play Argentina. So let's check it out. All right, so this is the Kaiken Ultra 2011. All right, here we go. Now, this wine um, is a higher end wine for them. It you, retails anywhere between $18 to $22 from what I can find out there. Um, let's see if it, this is also a Malbec. It's 96% Malbec and 4% Cab. Let me see, see if it's got that electric pink rim. Um, I wouldn't say it's electric pink. It's really, really deep purple though. Um, but I wouldn't say it's an electric pink rim, but it's extremely extracted. Okay, remember that maceration from the other wine? Same thing for this one. Um, seven days, pre-fermentative, uh, 10 to 12 during alcoholic fermentation and 10 to 15 post-fermentative. So again, about four weeks, uh, three to four weeks, maybe longer uh, on that. Uh, let's see. Um, now this one I thought, yeah, the other one, I don't think they, on the sheet, they didn't say where the, um, Oh, they did. So this one, uh, the grapes came from the Malbec grapes came from the Uco Valley, the Bonarda from Agrello Estate, and the Petit Verdot from the zone of Gualtalari. Gualtayare? I don't know, two L's. I'm not sure if they say ya or la. Probably ya. Anyway, um, this one. The grapes are produced in the Valley de Uco, and that's the Vista Flores. Uh, Altamira and Gualtayare, I'm sure that's how it's pronounced, and was called the first zone, the uh, Agrello and Vista Alba, or Vista Alba, probably. Not Vista Alba, because there's not, there's only one A in there. Um, Vista Alba, probably. That sounded too Italian, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, um, but, 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 but what else is I going to tell you about this? No, that's tasting notes, we don't want to go through that. Uh, sold the 15 kilogram uh, bin, same idea. And uh, the grapes are manual, manually selected before starting the winemaking process. 80% aged in French oak barrels for 12 months. Now, they do not say if they're new or used or one to three years or anything like that. So uh, it does say that it's ready to enjoy now or will age well for at least 10 years. Now, I'm going to say it's probably new French oak because it feels like there's a lot more influenced by the oak. Uh, a lot more vanilla and creaminess to it. <clears throat> um, just darker fruits. I wouldn't really, maybe, maybe a raspberry, but definitely darker fruits. Not as much woodsiness or earthiness to it as the other one. Real quick, the back of this label, it has it. Kaiken is a wild goose that crosses over the Andes between Argentina and Chile. It's on this bottle. Um, I don't see it on that one, but I'm not going to waste my time to read the entire thing. Um, it's good. It's creamier, or it's, it's, it's richer than the other one. It's definitely tastier, but it's a combination that has a little bit higher acid. It's on the palate. I'm not sure if it's acidity. It's just about the same. Just about the same on acidity. Um, it's actually supposedly less acidic than this one, but the pH is almost exactly the same. Um, it might be a combination of acidity and alcohol. Now this is 14.8% alcohol and it feels like, I feel I can feel the alcohol a little bit better. It's only 0.3% at least on paper. You got to range what it can be in the bottle. I think like this first one, I could probably just drink by itself. No big deal. 
This one I think really needs to be with food. Um, you know, the typical typical pairings with red wine. But it's a bit woodsier. And it's like a Something else, I'd almost say it's like, not chocolate covered, but candy-fied bark. Not a bad thing. I mean, it seems like two things you wouldn't want to do. You wouldn't want to, you know, put a twig in your mouth that had candy coating on it, but, you know, raspberry coated bark, but like a bit of raspberry coating, um, it, it's it's good. I kind of like this one better, but I think if I was eating something, this this wine here would be probably, you know, looking good here. I was, I was just trying to see where, why is the bottle so dark? I was looking at the little, the little LED screen. Definitely a call is not for me. See, they, oh, I thought they hung up. <laughs> I don't even know if you can hear the phone ring. Um, Cause this, this, my microphone setup does a really good job of eliminating background noise. Um, I plug into this, this is the Zoom H1. H1N, and it has a um, um, uh, noise, like a like a um, compressor limiter, and um, or no, noise gate. That's what I'm looking for. Does a really good job of eliminating background noise. Um, it's awesome. Uh, anyway, 18 to 22 dollars. Um, it's worth it. Um, I kind of like this one, maybe on taste value, but this one's a little more serious wine. You can tell it's more serious. It's it's a wine that begs for food. Maybe I won't say begs for food, but you probably should put food with it. Um, I think that will really enhance it. Um, I really, I really like it, but I guess I guess what it is is that I wasn't because it's tasting like it should for twenty dollars, and this one seems like it's tasting better than ten dollars. I think that's in my head. That's why I'm liking it better. I mean, I don't know, the, the, the aroma, I like the aroma, it's getting better. It's definitely a wine, probably if you decanted it or left it in the glass for 15 minutes, it would, it would um, improve. Yeah. That's good stuff. <coughs> Sorry. So, so, do I recommend it? Yes, I recommend it. If you, if you got it at the grocery store or the, or the wine shop and you see it and it's priced in the $18 to $22 range, you know, definitely get it. If it's priced higher than that, I'd probably wait to see it go on special. Um, if it's priced lower than that, you definitely want to get it. If you see it on a wine list, um, it's probably going to be in that $65 to $85 range. Again, the lower it is, the better the value, the higher it's still within its normal value range for a wineless wine, just because of how restaurants price their, um, their wines. But oh, it's a good wine, but it's definitely something you need to have food with um, and not drink by itself. Unless you just want to sit back and just evaluate the wine and just kind of drink the wine for what, for what it is, if, you know, just kind of enjoy it that way, you totally could. But... I actually, you know, something. I didn't, I didn't talk about any tobacco on this, but I could totally see smoking a cigar and drinking this one versus that one. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by and watching. Uh, click the links above to friend me up. I already mentioned it anyway, but that, that little donate button over there, hit that donate button. Send me a few ducats to uh, buy more. Well, I didn't buy these wines, but to buy more wine like this, um, and to pay for the hosting, pay for the website. I don't pay for the hosting yet. I might be paying for that soon, but I do pay for the website. I pay for all the equipment. I didn't pay for the barrels. Well, I kind of did. I spent a lot of money to go over to France to take that picture. I did take that picture. It's not a picture off the internet. It's the Petit Pouc uh, wine, uh, barrel room in the Entre du Mer. And that, if you don't know the story, that depending on the paperwork that you're looking at, that down the building excuse me the building was founded in 1337 and that's why i visited it um the wine's okay i mean it's not bad i mean i've had it before 
Um, I think I forgot what how much it costs, but it's it it tastes it, it drinks like it should for the uh, for the price that it is. <clears throat> anyway, uh, and it's very hard to find in the United States, but I found it through some small small place. But I did find it a few years ago. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it. Um, we will see everyone again next time with some cider.